Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the world of cloud computing. In this single video, we will learn all the concepts of cloud computing. So let's just start with the basic definition of cloud computing. So cloud computing is nothing but uh, one sec. Cloud computing is a technology that allows individuals and organizations to use computing resources over the internet okay this is the basic definition of a cloud computing what is cloud computing so cloud computing is a technology that allows individual and organization to use computing resources over the internet simple so see cloud computing is it's not like every time only organization will use cloud computing and individual can also use cloud com cloud computing okay so both can use cloud computing either individual or an organization it doesn't matter whether in organization they have 10 employees 100 employees 1000 employees if they want to use cloud computing so they can opt for cloud computing because cloud computing has several advantages that we'll talk in later over on premise so they can opt for cloud computing so cloud computing is nothing but this technology that allows individual and organization to use computing resources over the internet first of all they will use over the internet second what computing resources they can use so they can use for example physical servers physical servers they can use um, storage devices right they can use storage devices and they can use other hardwares as well other hardwares so these are the computing resources which an individual or organization can use over the internet right um if i give you an example so imagine instead of having your own computer or server in your office or home you can access all of your data software computing power from the internet and that's essentially your cloud computing it's like renting resources from a giant virtual computer instead of buying it instead of owning it right you don't have to own it you just rent it so this is your cloud computing cloud computing is based on pay per use model pay per use if you own anything if you buy anything then upfront you have to pay a certain amount x amount you have to pay but if you rent anything so you will have to pay as per the uses right so it is cheaper as compared to owning anything as compared to buying anything that is the uh, reason most organization are now switching to cloud computing i'll tell you other advantages as, as well right so let's talk about advantages before that this is the definition you can read it or you can take a screenshot already i have explained to you what uh, cloud computing is and what services uh, does it includes right so uh, let's talk about some of the advantages of cloud computing because of that we or as an individual or an organization we are now upgrading or migrating migrating to cloud because of these are the advances because of these advantages so what are the advantages that cloud computing provides first one is cost efficiency first one is cost efficiency right so as i already told you that it based on cloud computing is based on pay per use model which means it eliminates upfront hardware and software investment you don't have to pay upfront amount instead it's a pay per use model so what whatever um, uses uh, what what so have you used your um, cloud computing you have to pay as per that so it's totally based on pay per use right so what it will do it will reduce the it operational cost such as electricity cooling and maintenance because um, you are not purchasing it you are just renting it so you don't have to pay any electricity cost you don't have to pay any maintenance cost you don't have to uh, fix an ac for the cooling so that is why it is cost efficiency right second one is scalability scaly 
scalability right second one is scalability so what scalability means it is easily adjust resource based on demand scaling up or down as it needed for example if you purchase a hardware right a commodity hardware you purchase of let's say 100 tb this is your hardware you purchased right 100 tb and let's say your requirement uh, today uh, your requirement you you um, let's say uh, you host an application on this hardware and this application consumes today uh, today it consumes let's say uh, 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 100 gb only what about the rest of the spaces right let's say tomorrow the traffic got increases and it will use more than 100 tb let's say it you uh, it, ha it has to be used 120 gb but the limitation was 100 tb only right so you can't use this one right so it is useless like for example if i have to use less still i have to pay the same amount if i have to use more still i have to pay the same amount instead of that i can use cloud computing which provides scalability which means it will easily adjust resources based on the demand if the demand is high okay so if the demand is high it, it will scale up it will scale up if the demand is low it will scale down simply and you have to pay for that amount only instead of paying for 100 tb you have to pay for that amount only right so this is this is the benefit of using cloud computing third is accessibility my handwriting is too poor guys but just understand the concept okay fine what is accessibility accessibility means you can access data and application from anywhere with an internet connection you can access from anywhere across the world across the globe anywhere right and uh, it enables remote work and collaboration as well right it enables what remote work if you have a data center let's say in paris i'm talking about the commodity hardware you installed uh, at your home then uh, you can i mean access from your home only but if you opt for cloud computing you can access from anywhere around the globe you can access from anywhere that is the benefit of cloud computing right fourth one is focus on core business why i say this focus on core business because you just have to focus on your business offload the it management to cloud provider allowing business to focus on their core competency you don't have to worry about installation okay you don't worry uh, you don't have to worry about maintenance maintenance and all everything will be taken care by cloud computing right so you just focus on your business rest all the things will be focused will be done by cloud computing itself Fifth one is disaster recovery. Disaster recovery. Okay. So if you if you use cloud computing, so it is built in redundancy and data backup for improvement business continuity. In case of any, let's say uh, tsunami came, okay, or any natural disaster came, anything will come. If you have opted for commodity hardware so what will happen let's say uh, at home something got happen right some natural cam calamities got happen or any disaster got happen in that case your server might crash right so in that case your data will also lose you will lose your data fine but if you opt for cloud computing in that case it has disaster recovery it has it has a, a feature of built-in 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 disaster recovery okay dr disaster recovery so uh, your data will not store in a single availability zone i'll explain you what availability zone means or reason your data is not stored in a single reason it will get 
duplicate it will get redundant it will get uh, i mean uh, your data is getting duplicate in let's say three reason reason one reason two reason three one reason is in paris another reason is in mumbai another reason is in new york okay so three your data is getting duplicate in three places so let's say any natural disaster came in paris so still you have data in mumbai and new york you can get your data either from new york or mumbai let's say for example in mumbai anything got happened okay but still you have data in paris or new york you can easily access either from paris or new york so this is the advantage of cloud computing okay and uh, one more is automatic software update so automatically software will get update you don't have to worry about anything okay it will get update automatically the cloud provider cloud provider like for example if you opt for aws or azure or gcp or others as well so these are called as cloud providers which provides cloud services for us these will take care of everything right so these are some of the benefits of using cloud computing over on premise in on premise you have to do everything you have to do scale you have to worry about scalability you have to worry about accessibility and all everything but if you opt for cloud computing everything will be taken care by cloud computing so these are the benefits of cloud computing i hope it is clear to you guys right if you have any doubt you can comment down below fine now let's uh, see what are the different cloud computing service models that are available to us right okay so see cloud computing has three main service models one is uh, i call it as uh, one sec one is as another is pass and sas like infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service right in addition to these three broad categories okay these three broad categories you may also come across other types of cloud services that incorporate other technologies such as container for example the rising adoption of container and microservices architectures has led to emergence of cas right that is called as container as a service so this might you this also you might have heard about container as a service but in this video we'll only focus on on infrastructure as a service platform as a service and uh, software as a service another thing is also there that is uh, here platform of sorry function as a service where is it i can't see it yeah this one function as a service like so this one also you might have heard if you haven't heard that's that's fine it's not a big deal basically we'll focus on infrastructure as a service platform as a service and uh, uh, software as a service now i'm i'm saying service 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 what exactly is service so as a service typically means that the service model is offered by the by a third party in the cloud okay it is offered by a third party for example amazon aws or google cloud platform or microsoft azure in other words you don't have to purchase as a service means you don't have to purchase you don't have to manage it or use any hardware software tools or application from on premises data center right you just rent it you don't have to purchase it you have to rent it instead right you got it and you have to pay based on the consumption it's to it's uh, already i explained you it's based on pay pay per use right it's based on pay per use so in simple you have to pay a subscription or pay based on consumption to access what you need on demand via the internet connection got it so now let's see what exactly is iaas paas saas right so we'll see in depth so see this is a diagram of all the computing service models that any cloud computing uh, provider provides this is traditional on premise okay whatever uh, traditional on premise means you purchase any hardware by your own by paying upfront amount okay and these are the services provided by cloud providers 
so first let's see uh, the traditional uh, on premise okay so here if you purchase any traditional on premise uh, hardware the blue one is you have to manage and the green one is cloud provider will manage so if you purchase any um, hardware then you have to manage everything you have to manage the hardware thing you have to manage the virtualization you have to manage operating system runtime scaling application code data and configuration everything will be managed by you itself everything you will only manage right but if you opt for cloud computing if you opt for cloud computing any cloud computing provider let's say aws or azure or gcp any service provider you opt for they will provide these services and out of these services let's say if you offer iaas that is infrastructure as a service then what will happen you have to manage data configuration application code scaling runtime operating system and the cloud provider will manage your hardware and virtualization similarly if you opt for platform as a service then cloud uh, provider will manage your hardware your virtualization your operating system your runtime and these three things will be managed by you only but if you opt for platform as a service right then hardware virtualization operating system runtime scaling will be managed by your cloud provider and you just have to manage your application code and data and configuration that's it and if you opt for SaaS product software as a service then almost everything will be managed by cloud provider itself like hardware virtualization operating system runtime scaling application code for example gmail gmail which we are using we are just installing it from the play store or app store rest everything will be managed by google only right anything let's say facebook you are using facebook you are just installing facebook right rest all of the things will be managed by facebook itself so these are some SaaS products right so it depends on you what service you want to offer now let's talk about each of these services in details what exactly is ias sas pass cas fast everything right so let's first start with iaas that is your infrastructure as a service so the basic definition of infrastructure as a service is let's say, uh, it provides on demand access to fundamental computing resources like servers okay like servers storage networking virtualization and all okay so it provides on demand access to fundamental computing resources like servers storage networking and virtualization user have granular control over the infrastructure fine for example we have amazon ec2 that is elastic compute cloud then we have microsoft azure virtual machine azure vm right google compute engine gce google compute engine these are some of the examples of infrastructure as a service who uses it like who uses infrastructure as a service so any it professionals it professional can use infrastructure as a service any developers okay and system administrator who require flexibility and control over their infrastructure right and benefits what are the benefits of ias so one benefit it is cost efficient fine it is cost efficient and it is highly scalability and it is flexibility as well so these are some of the benefits and uh, let's talk about the challenges as well what are the challenges so one challenge it requires in-depth it knowledge to manage the infrastructure right you have to have in-depth knowledge of it to manage the infrastructure because you are opting infrastructure as a service that is why it is mandatory that you should have in-depth it knowledge because 
cloud provider will only manage hardware and virtualization rest all of the things like operating system runtime scaling application code data configuration you have to manage that is the reason you should have in depth knowledge if you are opting for infrastructure as a service fine now let's talk about second one that is platform as a service so it delivers a cloud based platform for developing testing deploying and managing applications without the complexity of building and maintaining the underlying infrastructure got it for example you have google app engine google app engine gae google app engine then you have microsoft azure app service you have heroku and all so these are some of the examples of pass products who uses it okay so any developer and application engineers who focus on application development without worrying about the infrastructure who just focus on application okay without worrying the infrastructure because if you opt for pass then see cloud provider will only manage hardware virtualization operating system runtime these these things will be managed by your cloud provider itself you just have to manage scaling application code and data configuration that is the reason it can be used by developers and application engineers who focus on application development without worrying about the infrastructure they just focus on application management that's it they don't have to worry about infrastructure because already these are maintained or managed by cloud providers now what are the benefits of pass or platform as a service so the benefits it it reduce time to market and it focus on core application logic is just focus on logic just focus on logic what are the challenges it has limited control over the underlying platform the challenge is it has limited control over the underlying lyng underlying platform it seems my handwriting is like a doctor <laughs> just kidding <laughs> Okay, fine. Now let's talk about SaaS, which is my favorite. I think it will become your favorite as well. So SaaS stands for Software as a Service. The basic definition of SaaS is it provides access to software application over the internet, eliminating the need for installation and maintenance. Right. So uh, as, as I already uh, explained to you, if you opt for SaaS product. right you don't worry you don't have to worry about anything regarding the installation regarding the maintenance everything will be maintained by cloud provider itself for example uh, already i gave you an example of gmail facebook instagram twitter salesforce microsoft office 365 everything it includes google workspace everything all of these are saas product where you don't have to manage anything everything will be managed by cloud provider itself right so this is the best thing if you are also trying to uh, build any product just try to build a saas product where user will only have to download it and use it rest all of the things will be managed by cloud provider itself fine so who can use saas product so any end user who require a specific software application without managing the underlying infrastructure what are the benefits of saas product so it is easy to use i told you right obviously it is easy to use because you just have to download it from either play store or app store or anywhere you just have to download and use it you don't have to worry about anything regarding the maintenance and all everything will be managed by your cloud provider right and it is very cost effective right it is very cost effective these are some of the benefits and autom- it, it it allows automatic updates as well but what are the challenges challenges are uh, i can say limited customization right it is having limited customization option compared to on premise software because if you have on premise software you can uh, do some customization in it but but if you use saas products for example gmail so you have only limited customization you can't tell to gmail like oh i need this feature i need that feature no you can't do that so these are having some limited customization but it's easy to use and it's cost efficient as well so i'm um, i i love this saas product right 
now these these were three main pr uh, services which are pro providing by cloud providers these are computing service model that is as pass and sas but apart from as pass and sas some or uh, some other services are also there for example uh this fast which is also known as function as a service so the basic definition is it's a serverless computing model where developers can write and deploy individual functions without managing servers for example we have aws lambda we have we have aws lambda then we have azure functions okay we have google cloud functions google cloud functions so these are some of the example of function as a service who can use it any developers building event driven application or microservices what are the benefits benefits are pay per use pricing pay per use pricing high scalability and you just focus on code that's it what are the challenges a challenge is it requires understanding of event driven event driven architecture right so you you should have a fair knowledge of event driven architecture then you can use function as a service fine and uh, other emerging models are also uh, available in the market nowadays i can see uh, for example one is database as a service dbaas that is known as database as a service which provides database service without managing the underlying infrastructure then we have uh, uh security as a service s e c a a s this delivers security solution as a cloud based service then we have uh, uh, desktop as a service d a s which enables users to access virtual desktop from any device so these are some uh, emerging services nowadays we can see but mostly there are three most uh, commonly usable services Uh, computing services model those are infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service i hope it is clear to you guys what are the benefits if you opt for infrastructure as a service or uh, container as a service platform as a service function as a service and software as a service so the these uh, the green color shows these uh, services will be taken care of by cloud service cloud providers and the blue one shows that it should be handled by you So obviously I would go for software as a service where I don't have to manage anything everything will be managed by cloud providers fine very good now what we will see we will see cloud computing deployment models this is very uh, i can say important thing uh, in cloud computing we have uh, several deployment model for example public cloud we have pri private cloud we have hybrid we have multi cloud and all So let's talk about each in detail. So first one is one sec. First one is our public cloud. Okay. See, all whatever model I am just going to explain you, each model has its own characteristic and advantage and disadvantage also as well. So let's see one by one. What is public cloud? so as the name itself depicts that a public cloud is shared by a public cloud is shared by multiple organizations okay it is shared by multiple organizations just heard it guys clearly what i'm trying to say i'm not writing all the definition here you just hear me clearly and you will get to understand what i'm trying to say for each of everything whether it's a, a computing deployment model or service model i'm not writing any definition because definition you can uh, check on google as, as well right you just have to understand it in this video just understand everything definition you can get it from anywhere right so just understand the concept so public cloud is uh, public cloud as a name depicts it is shared by multiple organization with the cloud infrastructure managed by a third party service provider fine so in a nutshell i can say it is shared by multiple organization for example aws amazon aws then we have microsoft azure then we have google cloud platform gcp right now let's talk about the advantages of public cloud 
public cloud simply you can say that public cloud is shared by multiple organizations the advantage is is it's cost effective it's highly scalable high availability see uh, cost effective as i already told you that it's based on pay per use right you have to pay based on the consumption highly scale scalable means it will scale up and scale down based on the traffic highly availability means as i already told you that your data will get stored in different different region r1 r2 r3 less i'm assuming three region your data is replicated into three region let's say for example r1 region got crashed then you can get your data from r2 region and r3 region as well right so it is highly availability 24 into 7 you will get your data don't worry about don't have to worry about any natural disaster and all it will always be available for you so it is highly available fine so we talked about advantages right now let's talk about the disadvantage as well because every everything has some pros and cons fine so disadvantage if i talk about disadvantage that then obviously uh, a big thing is security concern because this is a public cloud means it is used by multiple organizations so security is a concern so potential performance issue during peak uses and limited control over infrastructure this is a big advantage for if you or for public cloud then let's see private cloud then we have private private cloud so a uh, private cloud is a dedicated private cloud i can say it's dedicated to single organization with the infrastructure managed internally or by a third party service provider right so um public cloud as i told you that it is accessible uh or it is shared by multiple organization but in private cloud it is dedicated to a it is dedicated to a single organization fine it is since it is dedicated to a single organization so i'll tell you uh, during the advantages and disadvantages just simply just understand that private cloud is dedicated to a single organization example a large corporation setting up its own data center with the cloud capabilities right for a large a large corporation uh, is setting up because he has um, um, more uh, uh, i mean uh, revenue uh, he has more um, uh, amount so they can set up their own uh, data center right so they can opt for private cloud so if you opt for private cloud then what are the advantages so very first is it will enhance your security security will get enhanced because it is used by only one organization that a particular organization set up his own data center so obviously their employees will only use this cloud that will not be used by any other company's employee right so only uh the employee belongs to that particular company they will only use the cloud so that is why obviously it will enhance your security and obviously the control and customization as well it will get increased now what are the disadvantages obviously if you opt for anything private so you have to pay more so the disadvantage is higher cost but it is giving you security so just decide what do you want cost or security comment down below guys what do you want security or you have you can pay some more amount for security fine so uh, higher cost is uh, one of the disadvantage but it will and also in, it will increase the management overhead as well because uh, you have to manage it fine now let's talk about the third one which is hybrid why you have to manage is because you have to customize it right so customization you will get it so you have to manage it so some overload will also come ha huh, as the name 
depicts hybrid means it's a combination of public and private so let's just see the definition so hybrid cloud combines the benefits of both public and private cloud public plus private cloud is equals to nothing but your hybrid cloud okay so a hybrid cloud combines the benefits of both public and uh, private cloud which allows data and application to be shared between the two environment for example a bank using a private cloud for core banking system and a public cloud for non-critical application like customer facing websites right so this is a hybrid cloud and let's talk about some advantage and disadvantage regarding the hybrid clouds so one advantage is it's highly flexibility obviously it is cost efficient and also it improves disaster recovery and capabilities and about the disadvantage so it will increase the complexity in management and potential security challenges fine now some more are also there for example multi-cloud so mm, these are optional guys the only only three types of deployment models are popular one is public another is private and the last one is hybrid and let's talk about other cloud as well because they exist so we have to cover this as well because in this single video you just you will learn all the concepts of cloud computing fine so multi-cloud multi-cloud strategy involves utilizing multiple public cloud providers to distribute workload and reduce dependency on a single vendor for example a company using aws for storage azure for compute and gcp for machine learning right even i have worked with the uh, one company one startup uh, that company was using all, almost all the three uh, cloud provider aws azure and gcp as well so similarly any organization can use multi-cloud right already i i have given an example that any company can use let's say for example aws for storage purpose um azure for computing purpose and uh, gcp for machine learning purpose so if you combine all of these that will become your uh, multi-cloud so what are the advantages so advantage obviously it will increase the flexibility it will increase the flexibility and also improve it will improve the performance right and if i talk about the disadvantage then um, uh, you know this right what are the disadvantages because if you use everything then it will increase the complexity in management right it will increase the complexity in management fine cool now just comment down below which cloud deployment model you want to opt for just comment down below guys now let me talk about um, one second okay let me talk about the optimal cloud deployment model depends on various factors okay optimal cloud deployment model whether you should go for public or private or hybrid or multi-cloud what cloud you should go for right so it depends on various factors one is uh, i can say security fine so i mean you ha you should look for the security uh, because sensitive data often requires i mean if you look for security so um, i can say sensitive data often requires a private or hybrid cloud in security purpose if you look for scalability then i can say public and hybrid cloud offers great scalability fine public and uh, hybrid cloud offers great scalability and if you look for other factors let's say um, cost if you consider the cost then i can say public cloud 
Gen public cloud generally have the lower upfront cost fine and uh, if you look for control and management then i think private cloud offers more control fine so if you go for security then i think you should go for private or hybrid fine for scalability you should go for public and hybrid for cost public control and management obviously the private one cool so now you learned about the different deployment model and when you should choose go for a different cloud deployment model also i discuss about the different services model right like infrastructure as a service platform as a service function as a service and all now let's talk about the difference between on premise and cloud computing because uh, uh, prior to cloud computing we were using on premises right on premises so what is the difference between on premises and cloud computing let's just see see uh first let me explain you about the on premise on premise computing refers to the traditional method where hardware and software are physically located within an organization premises this means the company owns and manages all the it infrastructure including your server storage and networking equipment right this is nothing but your on premise but cloud computing already i discuss you cloud computing computing on the other hand it involves delivering of it services over the internet instead of owning and managing physical hardware business rent uh, businesses rent computing resources from a third party provider like amazon aws uh, microsoft azure or google cloud platform so th this definition already i explained to you what is cloud computing now let's see the basic difference between both right so if i talk about uh, location okay these i can call it as features first is location so you know on premise it's a physical location within the organization right it's a physical location within the organization if let's say if something got happened in the organization that entire your data will get damage but in cloud computing it's a remote data center this is one difference second is uh, ownership so who owns it obviously organization owns your hardware and software organization owns everything hardware and software but in case of cloud computing who owns it cloud providers because we are not owning it we are not purchasing we are just renting out and we are cloud providers okay we are just uh, we are just paying based on the consumption right now let's see the third feature that is cost so obviously if you purchase anything if you buy anything then you have to pay more so it is high upfront cost and also ongoing maintenance cost all as well because you have to maintain every day every single week every month as well so high maintenance expenses you have to bear right but in case of cloud computing it's pay per use model which means lower upfront cost so which is beneficial cloud computing or on premise just comment down below guys fourth is scalability right so uh, if you offer on premise it is very difficult to scale up
और स्केल डाउन क्विकली राइट आई गेव यू एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ हंड्रेड टी बी राइट समे ट्रैफिक माइट कम फॉर हंड्रेड जी बी समे फॉर हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी टी बी वट विल हैपन यू कांट स्केल अप और स्केल डाउन हियर इन केस ऑफ ऑन प्रमाइज बट इन क्लाउड इट इज ईजली स्केलेबल If today your traffic is just 10 GB, it will scale down. If tomorrow it is, let's say, 100 petabytes, so it will scale up. It's it's very easily it is is easily scalable, right? Based on what? Based on demand. Fine. Okay, cool. Now let's see uh, other feature. Uh, let's talk about security because security is the major concern. so if i talk about security then obviously you will get full control full control over security because you owned it right you have owned it you have paid upfront amount so you will get full control and uh, if you here um, if you go for cloud computing so it's shared responsibility with the cloud providers but you can if you opt for uh, private cloud then obviously you can get full control over the security as i already explained you fine and let's see the last one that is maintenance okay maintenance hmm okay if you own anything obviously you have to maintain it so in case of on premise i can say in house IT team responsible for maintenance in data center you might have seen in your company that they have specific IT team who oh, they are responsible for maintenance and all right so you have to pay salary to them just to maintain it but if you opt for cloud computing who will maintain cloud obviously cloud provider will maintain we don't have to pay any amount we don't have handles maintenance right we don't have to um, hire any it team to just maintain it because everything will be handled by cloud provider itself so i think these are some of uh i can say some of the differences between on premises and uh, cloud computing now let's uh understand with the example right imagine um let's say just a minute so imagine you have a you have a small business you have a small business right that needs email service okay you have a small business you have opened your own startup that needs email services services fine you just start your own startup a very small startup with just one or two employee and you need email services now if i opt for on premise then what will happen the business would purchase servers i mean you have to purchase server you have to install what email softwares right you have to install email softwares and you have to hire it staff to manage the system right this requires significant upfront investment and ongoing maintenance right am i right but if you opt for cloud computing this e same email services you want but if you opt for cloud computing the business would subscribe to an email service like gmail fine or i can say microsoft outlook you can directly subscribe for either gmail or outlook for business and for that you have to pay a monthly fee that's it monthly fee you have to pay a minimal amount of fee the cloud provider will handle all the technical aspects everything installation rest all maintenance everything the cloud provider will handle all the technical aspects along the business to focus on its core application you just focus on your email service just focus on your uh, um, i mean uh, task rest all the thing will be managed by cloud providers so which is best obviously i think cloud provider are the best cloud computing is the best but still guys just comment down below what do you think which one is best on premise or cloud computing 
um i think that's all about cloud computing i think whatever it was there in cloud computing i have covered everything i started with basic definition then i covered the advantages i covered the cloud computing service models that we have different service models i have covered and also i have covered different deployment models as well i don't think anything i missed out um that's it guys if you have any doubt please comment down below i'll try to answer you thank you and uh, already i have uh, started my azure um, dp203 azure data engineering course on my youtube channel do check out that video as well thank you so much bye bye